Hey guys, hope you're ready for a great story today. It's called The Barnabas Project. And it's all about this underground lab that's building the perfect pets. But what happens to the pets that don't make the cut? You're gonna find out. I hope you enjoy the story, guys. See ya. The Barnabas Project by the Fan Brothers. The Barnabas Project by Terry, Eric, and Devin Fan. Barnabas lived in a secret lab. He was half mouse and half elephant, and he had lived in the lab as long as he could remember. The lab was hidden beneath perfect pets on a perfectly ordinary street. It was deep underground where no one would ever find it. The lab was where they made perfect pets, except Barnabas wasn't quite perfect. He had been put in a part of the lab called Failed Projects. His home was rather small, but that just meant it was easier to keep tidy. The green rubber suits always fed Barnabas his favorite food, which was cheese and peanuts. And yet, he sometimes wondered about the world outside of his little bell jar. It was Pip the cockroach who told them stories about the world above. Stories about a sparkling silver lake, green trees, and mountains that reached all the way to the sky, lit with their own stars. Maybe someday I'll sit on the grass and look at the stars, said Barnabas. And when he closed his eyes, he almost could. Impossible, said Pip. Nothing is impossible, said Barnabas, but secretly he worried his friend might be right. At that moment, the green rubber suits came in. They turned on the lights and checked each bell jar one by one. They made strange noises to each other. They peered and they poked. They peeked and they prodded. They put red stamps on all the jars. Then they left. What does it mean? said Barnabas, looking up at the strange red stamp. It means you're going to be recycled, said Pip. That's what happens to all failed projects. You'll be fluffier afterwards, offered Pip kindly. And you'll be cuter, and your eyes will probably be bigger. I like having small eyes, said Barnabas, although he wasn't even sure anymore. Barnabas slumped in his jar. He wasn't fluffy enough, and his eyes were beady, but he liked himself just the way he was. And what if, after he was recycled, peanuts and cheese were no longer his favorite foods? What if his friends didn't recognize him after? What if he no longer cared about green trees and mountains lit with their own stars? We need to escape, said Barnabas suddenly. The other failed projects gasped, but then they cheered. Impossible, said Pip. Nothing is impossible, said Barnabas. He took a step back and he kicked as hard as he could. He charged at the glass, but the bell jar was much stronger than he was. Finally, Barnabas made a sad sound with his trunk. A tiny crack appeared. He was free. Then he freed the others, the dust bunnies, Light Up Lois, Bumble Bear, the Amotax, Mushroom Sloth, Wally the Ripple, Stick One and Stick Two, Quirt, Moshi, Pompadou, Birdle, Blinky, the Bottle Mogs, Lowell, Percival, Spike, Pinto, Chloe, Peep, Leaf, all of them. You have to understand, they had never been outside of their jars before. There was quite a commotion. They whooped and sang. They chirped and hooted. 
They stretched their legs and jumped for joy. When they calmed down a bit, they peeked over the edge. The floor was far below. Now what? said Quirt. We have to work together, said Barnabas. One by one, they helped each other down until they finally reached the floor. Shh, said Barnabas, and they all fell silent. Then they heard it too, footsteps in the corridor outside. Quick, said Barnabas, we can go through here. He didn't like dark places, but the footsteps were getting closer. Everyone crawled into the vent with light up Lois leading the way. It was a tight squeeze for some of them. The vent led into the most secret part of the secret lab. They all looked up. We need to run, cried Pip. But Barnabas couldn't run. The great sad eyes seemed to be looking directly at him. We can't leave it behind, said Barnabas. It's scary, said Pip. It's monstrous, said Quirt. It's appalling, said the Amotax. It's a failed project, said Barnabas, just like us. They worked together to turn the great valve that opened the tank. But it was too late. The green rubber suits had found them. Just when all seemed lost, the tank doors swung open and water flooded into the lab. Up the water carried them. Up to the world above. When they finally opened their eyes, they were in a puddle surrounded by shelves of perfect pets. Everyone ran towards the exit. Barnabas stopped. It was almost like looking in a mirror, except Barnaby's eyes were bigger and his fur was like cotton candy. He was perfect. Barnabas! Pip called from the front of the store. Look, it's the outside world! Barnabas ran to join his friends. He might not be perfect, but he was free. The world was much bigger than Barnabas and his friends ever could have imagined. And just like Pip said, there were mountains that reached to the sky, lit with their own stars. You're right, said Pip. Nothing is impossible. Soon they found a place full of sunshine and happy noises, green trees and soft grass. A place that might be home. It wasn't always easy. But they always stuck together.